All right, so here's my DR650. She's uh, some amount of years old. She is due for a 5000km service. So I'll show you what I normally do in that service. Okay, so here's my totally not pirated copy of the factory service manual. I also use the climber manual, but I refer to the factory manual for my 5000k service. It asks for service every 6000, I go with 5000 just because it's easier to keep track of. Also there's no harm in changing oils more often. So a normal 5000 um, K service for me would be, I'll have a look at the spark plugs, sometimes I don't. I'll clean the air cleaner. I mostly commute, um, in which case I just do it at 5000. If I'm doing a lot of dirt roads, like on the holidays, then I will clean the air filter out every 2000 or 3000 Ks. Basically whenever I feel like it. The idle RPM has not been touched in a long time. The fuel line, I just replace it every about 25,000 Ks whenever I do like a really big service. The, so the clutch, I make sure the clutch cables are just properly. Engine oil replaced of course. Filter, I replace on every 5,000 Ks, it costs 10 bucks, why not? Drive chain, I have a look at it and I do a proper clean and lube every 1,000 um, Ks anyway. Brakes, check for function, blah blah blah. Brake hoses, same with the fuel hoses. Fluid, I change them out every two years. Tires, I change them out whenever I feel like it which is about now because the rear is bold. Don't have a spark arrestor. Steering, and I will, I will do the front forks every 5,000 Ks just because the DR seems to whack itself out of alignment real easy compared to other bikes. And check the chassis bolts and exhaust bolts. Now, this is a very simple procedure. And the first thing you want to start off with is the draining the oil because it takes a while and you want to just let it sit. You don't want to drain the oil when it's cold because you want to drain it when it is hot and it is at its most easily flowing state. So I'm going to take the bike out for a quick ride after I gear up and take it out to the local bike shop and buy myself a fuel filter. That should be warm enough. All right, back from the store and a new oil filter cost me New Zealand $8, $8.55. Decent high flow. I could get a K&N oil filter, which is supposedly better. But I swap these out every 5,000 Ks anyway, so other than that, I already have a bowl of oil from when they were on sale last time. This is a Pentrite MC4 stroke 10W40, which is approved for motorcycle use. It is full synthetic. Um, there is, they also have a more premium one which says shear free and the other one doesn't but that should also be shear free anyway because it's full synthetic as well again as long as you're running full synthetic probably doesn't matter I've seen guys who run dinosaur oil as in uh, what you call those things um, the diesel engine oils just fine no problem these are better than that, I think.
All right, so things you need from the oil change, for the oil change, this is what's in my little kit that I keep on my bike, and this is exactly what I should need to do my oil change. Wrench, 8mm, well, yeah, 8mm. This is a 13mm for the sump plug extension bit and that should be about it and a new oil filter and of course some oil Okay, first thing you do is find a piece of wood and Chuck it under your side stand so the bike is more level with the ground. You could chuck it in a on a on a proper stand. I never bother because why would you? Get a piece of towel, put it here, and feel free to sump plug right there. There we go. Now grab your 13 mil plug. And wear gloves. Now this, make sure you've set it to the left, because lefty loosey and take the oil sump plug if I can show it. oil sump plug out of there now turn it slowly because you're gonna start to get oil leaking out it's supposed to come out of there when you turn it all the way out, hot oil is going to come out because you warmed up the bike. Remember, when the bike is hot, the oil is hot. Okay, so let me do this. On some other bikes, you will have like a screw here. I'm just talking from experience with the old SR400. Um, that you will have to do that one and then the one at the bottom. Anyway, on the DR, there's only one. Oh, and before you forget, take the uh, cap off. There we go. Oh, that's hot. Because that way, there's no weird vacuum forming as you take the sun plug out, so it doesn't glug, glug, glug. Ah, hey, look at that. I think I've got one oil leak from the seal. I wonder if I'll ever do anything about that. Anyway, leave your fill cap here and take your sun plug out slowly. Make sure you don't get oil all over your gloves. Okay, so here's the sump plug, um, the crush washer seems to be in good shape, you could replace these every time, they're not that expensive, but um, I don't, I'll do it maybe once every 5 oil changes or something, 
Now one thing you do want to have a look at is how much metal shavings are on your magnetic sun plug because you have a magnetic sun plug, right? That doesn't seem too bad. I've seen worse, I've seen better. So I'm just going to clean that up and be happy with it because I think I I heard some grinding noises from when I was shifting down on the way but that doesn't look like it's done any significant damage to the engine or anything. Yeah, just give it a nice clean. There's one bit of metal there actually that's uh, That appears to be a chunk. I don't like that. Not a big fan of that. So the third gear might be going, which uh, fuck me. But anyway, overall it looks pretty good. Just gonna shift around in the oil and uh, see uh, if I can feel any metal filings. But yes, that oil was pretty damn hot. Careful with that. Alright, next bit is the uh, oil filter. So keep the sump plug out. Just gotta put the, a bit of towel between the filter and the uh, bash plate so I can just catch any residual oil that drips out of there. For these three plugs, you are going to need a 8mm. And just take about a third of a turn on each bolt because you don't want to compress that o-ring in a weird way and have to go out and buy a new o-ring this should just... this shouldn't be in there very tight there we go, and take the rest of the way out with your hands be a gentleman about it, you know see, there we go, I've got oil coming out the bottom It's like a massacre. Jesus. Probably could have uh, let the oil drain out a bit more. Towel to uh, put the filter on. I'm just gonna put this cap and rest it on there so I don't have any debris falling into it. I'm just turning that with my hand, no tools involved here. Take the bolts out, the uh, this thing should drop out. Should have a spring pushing the against the filter and a o-ring that goes against the surface and into the groove there. Just gonna put pop the o-ring back on and clean out the filter cap with some Towel doesn't need to be awfully clean, just make sure there isn't any like chips under.
Alright, now to take out the filter, that's not a very hard process, but the filter is hot. And looks like I did manage to catch most of the oil. So I say I got lucky. There's another dirty tongue, of course. So the filter just slips out, pops out. It's a bit of a wiggle job. There we go. Just pops out like so. Just have a look at the filter, see if it looks particularly metallic or anything, but it doesn't look too bad. Now the other thing is there should be an o-ring right around there. My bike did not come with one. Check that your previous owner has not lost that o-ring. Because what can happen is people don't pay attention, the o-ring goes into the stays with the filter on this side and is lost to the void. They're relatively cheap and I suggest that you replace this o-ring and that o-ring every four or five oil changes. It's not that difficult. Now that that's done I'm just gonna wipe my glove, take it off, because Jesus look at that it is hot. Just put that off to the side. So to put the uh, new oil filter in, just give it a quick inspection, make sure that there's no rips in the paper. Unlike that ding, but uh, I believe that's part of the manufacturing process. Make sure it's the same filter as the other one too. Okay, so this side, this side goes towards the small o-ring. The o-ring sits in here and seals it to the internals. Okay, now the spring pushes against that and makes a proper seal. The spring here goes on this thing, and they go on like so. I mean like so, with the Suzuki logo facing up. Now you just want to be careful that this o-ring is seated in there nicely, it's not dirty, which mine is kind of. And that it hasn't flattened out, because otherwise it will leak. What you want to do is just gingerly push that thing on there. Push it against the body. And start with some of the bolts. Thread it in, one or two threads. Just to hold the cap in place. The and you just want to tighten them up kind of equally the whole way through. It's like tightening anything else on the engine. You don't want there to be pressure on one side. These don't actually have any torque values. I do them up to the generic torque value for 6 mils, which is 10 Nm. It's a bit of a touch feel type thing anyway. These bolts are quite easy to strip. Don't strip these. What a bloody pain in the ass that will be. Click. And 
click. Just double check all the way around. And she's good to go. Oil filter done. Now with the um, actual oil, I'm just going to let that set for a while. I do other things like cleaning the air filter or doing the clutch adjustment because there's still drops of oil coming out. You want to get as much of the dirty oil out of there as possible. That's why you want the bike to be level as possible. I'm too lazy to put it on a stand. Alright, so the air filter lives under the uh, left hand side of the bike. Take the cover out and it resides under this. My previous owner was kind enough to leave me just two of the original screws that hold this thing together. And the other two have been replaced with decking screws. Does it matter? Probably not, because I'm not crossing any rivers. Or if I am, it's not coming up to bloody way, um, all the way up here. So this is the glorious air filter. See, it looks like a pineapple, and it's blue, and it's because it's filled with oil. You have to clean these, otherwise, this is the most important thing to your engine's health. Okay, you fuck these up, and you fuck your engine up. So to take this out, you take that little bolt out. And you want a glove. Because that stuff is nasty. I believe it's like petrol gel. Take that off. This is the most finicky thing. The air filter just slides up and over like so. Now I like to stuff a um, what you call it a towel in there just for just so crap doesn't fall in it. There we go, air filter removed. Now, with that air filter removed, you also want to remove another air filter. You want to have these if you have a TM40 car. But if you have a TM40 car, you probably shouldn't be watching these kind of videos anyway. Because at that point, you would probably know that these bikes might have died that off to the side and the seat comes off with a 12 mil. seat off
and this is the other air filter that you need to clean this thing it is directly connected to the carburetor and I'm just gonna put a bit of plastic over it so you take these two <laughs> take it to over to your least favorite sink for me it's the one in the garage you can see I keep my garage in a very impeccable um, form. And I'll put these down in here for now. Go grab yourself a wee plastic bag. And just wrap this thing. If that gets dirty, you're gonna get whatever dirt to it is in there directly into the carburetor. You don't want that. Okay, so to clean these filters, you need a sink, some cold water, and lots of patience. Pretty sure you can't see what I'm doing, but this filter has a hole at the top. That's where the air goes in. I'm putting water through there, so when the water comes up through here, it's taking any of the uh, gunk that's been attached to the outside, and I'm not putting water in through there. Or at least that's the idea. cleaning and with the filter body it's this white plastic web looking thing just slide that off it's not a problem it should just slide right off there we go all I want to do is just give this whole thing a nice clean with the water from the inside to the outside all I'm doing Getting the foam wet and squeezing it. Do not wring these, you will rip them. And as I'm doing it, I'm just gonna look for any kind of rips or holes I think that looks right to me. This thing doesn't technically need a wash, but just give it a quick wash anyway. Now I'm going to take some of this Bell Ray filter cleaner, shake it well, and give it a quick spritz. Give it a good spray. And give this thing a good spray too. Let's just work that Del Rey stuff into the two foam filters. Thank you. 
The way I see it, you're likely to never going to get this thing the same color as when you drilled it new, no matter how much of the filter cleaner you use. The idea then is actually just to clean it regularly. Work it in to the filter. And wash it out. Do be ginger with it. This is foam. It will rip if you uh Do anything particularly stupid with it. Remember, do not wring these out, just squeeze them gently together. Squeeze them gently together. Alright, so while that dries, I'm gonna do the clutch adjustment. You should be doing this when the bike's cold, but I don't honestly see much difference. So this is my emergency clutch lever because I have managed to break off my normal one as you do and as you can see it doesn't fully go all the way back because this low perch is shorter so all I'm just gonna do if you have more plate to take out fiddle with this thing this thing but no, I've only got a little bit of play I want to take up, so I'm just going to take that off with this. And I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to lock that into place and leave it at that. I like to have a look at that. Okay. Another thing you can do while you wait is do the front forks. So what I mean by that is that's the wrong bit. is one don't touch those bolts or that bolt or the caliper bolts or the upper tree clamp bolts however do loosen these ones up Only need to be back there. 
out a little bit. Come out. Now what you want to do is you want to grab the front wheel with your knees, reach up to your handlebars and wiggle them. Okay, let's see if I can show that to you. Throw these blankets in the way. Then what you want to do is tighten those back up to I should always forget this. Lower 26 newton meters. Get your torque wrench. Get your butt. The reason you do this is because I feel like with the um, DR650 especially, it is a very, um, you can get the front forks out of wet quite easily. And it's just good practice, I feel like, if you don't want to suddenly experience death, wo death wobbles. If you don't do much off-roading or um, don't find yourself in ruts like I do, um, perhaps you don't need to do this. I consider this part of just normal ownership. It's not very difficult to do, so no excuse I feel like. So that should be the front forks aligned. And yeah, that looks good enough. Another thing you want to do is check your chain and give it a good clean. I actually cleaned this just the um, about two days ago before I went on a big trip, so I'm not going to bother. But I'm seeing a weird we wear mark on the chain. So I might want to see if I can find why that is. It might be um might be a bit of chain slap. That looks pretty loose. But anyway, that's for the most part the whole service done. All you have to do now is measure out 2.2 liters of oil, chuck it in there, put the air filter back in. Okay, so it's been a few hours. Today's been a very hot day, so I'm just gonna do this. During the winters, I'll wait overnight, but it is 
that's been blistering hot and I think this should be alright. This is um, Bell Ray Foam Oil and this is a used ice cream container. Check your oil filter in and squeeze out any excess oil because if there's any excess oil it will leak out the bottom of your crease and you really don't need the excess oil I say that looks presentable. And I dropped it in the oil again. And I say that's good enough. The gel has petroleum. This is after that thing's dried. I should have another glove. I don't. Off, take that out. You want to make sure that you get every single square centimeter of this thing covered in oil. I'm gonna get some gloves from my other hand. Actually, I've got one sitting here, no reason not to use them. You just want to work on the oil. Into the filter. See how it's turning blue. And make sure you get it to the inside of the filter as well. And then you're done. You should check the bolts. I never do. But then again, I do complain about things falling off the bike. So that may depend on your mileage. Check everything works. I'll ride this every day, so if it didn't work, I'd be pretty pissed. Yeah, anyway, pretty uh, straightforward. That took what less than an hour.
did not need that many tools. Good luck. If you get stuck with anything in particular, let me know. I'll try and help. But, uh... It's not that complicated of a bike. I mean... That's probably as simple as it gets without going into two strokes. And there's racing two stroke these days. I think might be more complicated than a DR650. So what I'm trying to say is... If you can't follow instructions, I suggest you take it to a mechanic. And pay him $400 to do the service. That cost me $30 at most. <laughs>